welcome to another lecture of this module computer aided power system analysis in the last lecture we have looked into the basic algorithm of the of the neutron absorption rectangular method now in this lecture we will be looking into the complete algorithm of this neutron absorption rectangular method in which you would be also taking into consideration the generator reactive power limits please remember that in the last lecture where we have talked about the basic neutron absorption rectangular method we did not consider the generator reactive power limits but in this lecture we would be considering the generator reactive power limits so as to make this algorithm complete so let's start so complete nrlf rectangular technique. So, steps, first step is usual step, take flat start, initialize this vector x 0 and initialize k is equal to 1. As we have said, k is nothing but the iteration count. So, it is the iteration count. Then from the second step onward, in the second step we will first check the generator reactive power. So, for i is equal to 2 to m. Please remember in our convention, if there are m generators in the system, first bus is always the slack bus and buses 2 to m are nothing but the PV buses. So, we have to cross check the generator reactive power limits from bus 2 to m. So, we first calculate q i k. Now, how to calculate q i k that we have already seen in the last lecture. So, we have to <coughs> actually utilize that particular expression which we have already given in the last lecture. Please remember in that particular uh, expression we have to utilize the real and imaginary part of the voltages corresponding to the last iteration or rather the uh, in this case when actually k is equal to 1, so we have to utilize the real and imaginary part of the uh, real and imaginary part of the voltages corresponding to the initial guess that is corresponding to x x 0. So, calculate q i k if q i k is less than equal to q i max and greater than equal to q i mean, then i th bus remains as as a p v bus. If q i k is greater than q i max, then what happens? So, in that case as we have already seen that this p v bus would be changed to p q bus. So, then therefore, for this bus also you will have some value of q i specified and that q i specified would be q i specified would be is equal to q i max. And if similarly if q i k is less than it actually should be greater than should be greater than less than q i mean 
then also q i s p becomes q i mean. Now, in these two cases there will be some change in dimension of several vectors and matrices. So, let us first look at this that what would be the dimension change with a simple example. After that we will again continue with this algorithm. So, we take a simple example. Say n is equal to 100 and m is equal to say 10. Now, suppose at some iteration at some iteration it is found at some iteration it is found suppose some iteration it is found that q say 3 k and q say 9 k violate the limit violate the corresponding limits. So, then therefore, what will happen? So, now let us look at all the vectors and then let us look at all this corresponding Jacobian sub, sub matrices. Now, in this case p vector would be it will remain unchanged to p vector e would be p 2, p 3 up to p 100 transpose it would be still 99 cross 1 which is nothing but n minus 1 cross 1. So, it will remain unchanged. What will happen to this q vector? Earlier q vector was q 11 please remember because from m plus 1 th bus to n th bus that is from 11th bus to 100th bus those buses are p q buses. So, then therefore, this q vector originally was q 11 say q 12 up to q 100, but now because q 3 k and q 9 k have also violated their reactive power limit. So, then therefore, for third bus also it has now become a p q bus and for 9 bus also it has become a p q bus. So, then therefore, so then therefore, for this we will have extra 2 elements. So, this is the initial case. So, this is the initial original, this is the original q vector and this is the addition due to violation in q limits. So, then in this case what is the dimension would be? So, from here to here it is 90 plus 2. So, it is 92 cross 1. Now, what was the now here what is the original q vector dimension? Original q vector dimension is it is already it is simply 90 cross 1 and this addition is basically 2 cross 1. So, then therefore, what we have got original plus addition. So, that is basically 92 cross. So, then in general if there are 
L violations where A would be M minus 1, L violations then Q vector would be N minus M plus L cross 1 vector. So, this is the new Q vector. What happens to the V square vector? V square vector earlier was earlier was V2 square, V3 square, dot dot dot, V9 square, V10 square T. This is the original V vector. So, this is the original V square vector. But now, because of this generated reactive power violation, third bus and ninth bus, they are not anymore PV bus, they have now been converted to PQ bus. So, as a result, this have now been included into the Q vector as we have just now seen. So, then therefore, the modified the modified V square vector is V square is equal to V 2 square, V 3 square will not be there, V 4 square, then V 8 square, then V 9 square would not be there, V 10 square. Now, what was the original dimension of this? Original dimension was 9 cross 1, this is the original dimension. Original dimension. What is the new dimension? New dimension is 7 cross 1 because bus 3 and bus 9 have now converted to p q bus and their contribution has been taken into account into the q vector. So, then this is the modified dimension. So, this is the modified dimension. So, then therefore, in general, for L violations, again L violations, V vector, the dimension of the wave vector would be V square vector would be M minus L minus 1 cross 1. Okay. So, these are the dimensions of this known quantities. What about the unknown quantities? Unknown quantities are unknown quantities. vector E, vector E would still be E 2, E 3 to E 100, because we have already discussed that whether any bus is P V or P Q at the starting when we have started discussing this NRLF rectangular method, we have already uh, argued that whether any bus is P V or P Q even for a PV, PV bus, although we know the voltage magnitude, but because we do not know the angle, so then therefore, real and imaginary part are not known. So, then therefore, irrespective of the case whether any bus is PV or PQ, right for any bus except the slack bus, both these 
real and imaginary part would be unknown. So, then therefore, E vector would be still be E 2 E 3 E 100. So, then its dimension would be still 99 cross 1 in this case. So, in general it would be always n minus 1 cross 1. Similarly, f vector would be also f 2, f 3, f 100 and it would be in this case 99 cross 1. So, in general would be n minus 1 cross 1. So, then therefore, we are taking an example here. So, this is an example. So, then now let us look into the Jacobian sub matrices. So, Jacobian sub matrices were with J, J1, J2, J3, J4, J5, J6. These are all Jacobian sub matrices. We have got delta E, delta F, that would be delta P delta q delta e square. So, in case of violation we have already seen that this dimension is n minus 1 cross 1, this dimension is n minus m plus l cross 1, this dimension is m minus l minus 1 cross 1 this dimension is n minus 1 cross 1, this dimension is n minus 1 cross 1. So, then therefore, j 1 still remains n minus 1 cross n minus 1. So, this dimension does not change, j 2 also remains n minus 1 cross n minus 1 j 3 changes, j 3 it now becomes n minus m plus l cross n minus 1, j 4 also the same. What happens to j 5 and j 6? j 5 becomes m minus l minus 1 cross n minus 1 and j 6 also the same. So, these are the new change dimensions of the different sub matrices. Now, what happens to the total dimension of the j matrix? Now, here it is 2 n minus 2. So, this is actually 2 n minus 2 cross 1 this is also n minus 1 and plus. So, this is also 2 n minus 2 cross 1. So, then overall this j matrix, so overall this j matrix, so then overall this j matrix, j matrix overall this dimension does not change 2 n minus 2 cross 2 n minus 2. So, that dimension does not change, overall dimension does not change but this j 3, j 4, j 5, j 6. Now, in the case of j 3, j 4, what would be the structure of j 3 and j 4? For example, I am just showing the structure of j 3, that same structure would be also for j 4. So, j 3 earlier was del q, um, let us say in this example del q 11 to del e 2, then del q 11 del E 3 dot 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 del Q 11 del E 100. Then it goes to del Q 100 del E 2 del Q 100 del E 3 del Q 100 del E 100. So, this matrix is the original, but now because of the violation at bus 3 and bus 9, so then 2 extra rows would be at added and these extra rows would be del Q 3 by del E 2, del Q 3 by del E 3, 
del q 3 by del e 100 and del q 9 by del e 2, del q 9 by del e 3 and del q 9 by del e 100. So, then therefore, up to this it is actually um, 90 cross 1. So, that is n minus m cross 1 and these two are 2 cross 1. So, that is L cross 1. Right? Similar structure would also be for J 4, only difference is that instead of E at the denominator, it would be the imaginary part of the voltages, rest of the structure is the same. What happens to J 5? J 5 earlier was a del V 2 square by del E 2 and then let us say del V 2 square by del E 3 dot 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 del V 2 square by del E 100, then del V 3 square by del E 2, del V 3 square by del E 3, then dot 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 del V 3 square by del E 100 and then we go up to this, then we have del V 9 square by del E 2 del V 9 square by del E 3, then dot 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 del V 9 square by del E 100 <coughs> and last is del V 10 square by del E 2, del V 10 square by del E 3 and uh, del V 10 square by del E 100. So, this is the original. So, this is the original. So, this is the original J 5 matrix. So, we say that this is the original J 5 matrix. because now bus 3 and bus 9 have now converted to PQ bus. So, then therefore, this row would not be there and this row would not be there. So, then therefore, these rows would be del V 2 corresponding to one row would be V 2. After that, it would be V 4, V 5, V 7, V 6, V sorry, V 2, V 4, V 5, V 6, V 7, V 8 and then V 9 would not be there and then V 10. So, then therefore, here it will be total 7 rows. So, earlier it was earlier it was m minus 1 cross n and modified is is m minus l minus cross 1. So, this example ends here. Third step is that change the dimensions of all unknown vectors specified vectors and Jacobian sub matrices properly as we have now discussed. As we have now discussed, so after we finish this for all these PV buses, then accordingly we will change the dimension of, of unknown vectors, specified vectors and the Jacobian sub matrices properly. So, once we do that, 
So, this algorithm continued, so algorithm continued. continued. Once we do that in the fourth, we compute delta m k vector. Now, how to compute delta m k vector? We have already seen in the last lecture, we would be following this identically the same procedure. Only with this exception that depending upon the number of violations, the dimensions and the quantities corresponding to the q vector as well as the sorry uh, dimensions and the quantities corresponding to the delta q as well as the delta v square vector would be changed. But otherwise, we will calculate this delta m k vector as we have done for uh, as we have done in the last lecture. So, after that we calculate error k as we have as we have done in the last lecture we calculate error k error corresponding to the kth iteration remember this k at the subscript denotes that it is corresponding to the kth iteration then if error kth iteration is less than some epsilon or rather the threshold then stop. Else go to step 7. So, what do we do in step 7? We evaluate Jacobian matrix corresponding to iteration k and then and subsequently delta x k vector. How to do this that also we have seen in the last lecture and then we update x k vector is equal to x naught vector plus delta x k. Then we update uh, increment k is equal to k plus 1 and go back to step 2. So, this is the complete algorithm. Of course, here you can see that we have not filled up all these steps properly, because we have already all these steps we have already discussed in great detail in our last lecture. So, basically many of these things would be just as common as we have done in the last lecture. So, then therefore, we have taken some liberty to actually um, omit some of the uh, some of the details here. So, now let us look at some very small example. So, some small example again we are looking at this example of that same five bus system. So, initially what we have that in this particular five bus system n is equal to 5 and m is equal to 3. So, then therefore, g 1 would be n 1 n 1 n minus 1 cross n minus 1. So, 4 cross 4. Similarly, j 2 also n minus 1 cross n minus 1, so 4 cross 4. j 3 is n minus m cross n minus 1, so it is 2 cross 4. Similarly, j 4, j 5 also this, j 6 also this and the total and the total j is 8 cross 8. So, without any generator q limit, this are the result, it takes 5 iterations and this these results are identically same as what we have uh, obtained corresponding to this uh, GSLF and NRLF polar. Only things to be noted that 
correspond in this case also as compared to this GSLF, the number of iterations taken by neutron Raphson rectangular technique also pretty low, it is only 5, earlier it was roughly 69 or 70. Now here also again then if we consider this generator Q limit, so in the third iteration there is a violation of the reactive power limit of generator 3, so then accordingly what we have discussed in the uh, just now in this lecture that accordingly this dimensions of all this q vector, v square vector, j3 submatrix, j4 submatrix, j5 submatrix and j6 submatrices are changed and then again these calculations are repeated and after when these calculations are repeated, so then also this entire algorithm converges in 5 iterations and as we have already said in this case that for this 5 bus systems, this generator reactive power limit for generator 3 was taken to be 0.5 per unit. So, if you look at this earlier it was actually generating 0.68 per unit, but now it is limited to 0.5 per unit. So, it is now being limited to 0.5 per unit, because it is being limited to 0.5 per unit. So, then its voltage is not being able to maintain at 1 per unit, it has now become less. Here also total iteration is 5. Uh, which is pretty less as compared to GSLF. So, now in this lecture we have looked into the detailed example or, uh, or rather we have looked into the detailed algorithm of this neutron Raphson rectangular method followed by in one small example. So, from the next lecture onwards we will be looking into other aspects of this course. Thank you.